Hello, my name is Kane Munro, and today I'm talking about business and life advice in song lyrics like I do every Friday. What are today's lyrics? They're here, right there. You can see them. Have a look, read them. I'm gonna talk about them in a second. Now, oh, how I wish that those lyrics were true for me because I play it fair and try to treat people how I would like to be treated, especially when it comes to business as well. The thing is that most of my business is currently from outsourcing accountancy and outsourcing SMSF work, and outsourcing is the home of so many, so, so many unscrupulous businesses who have one marketing plan, which is to spam and to spam and to spam. Buy a phone list, call, call, repeat. Buy an email list, blast out email, repeat. They even spam me, even though I'm essentially a direct, but better, competitor to them. Now, spamming is a common practice for some businesses, especially the ones who email me. But spam can be very detrimental to, or detrimental to the excess of your brand and your business. Uh, spam messages are annoying, they're intrusive, and often lead to people distrusting or actively avoiding products or services from companies that send them. Not only does spam hurt your reputation with customers, but it also has legal consequences as well. Spam messages are a violation of the Spam Act, which I think is 2003, and that is enforced by the Australian Communications and Media Authority, or ACMA for short. Now, if you plan to send marketing messages or emails, you must first have permission from the person who will receive those messages. Now, there are two types of permission, express and inferred. Express permission is where a person gives express permission uh, and they knowingly accept that they will receive marketing emails or messages from you. People can give express permission by one of the following ways. Uh, you can fill out a form, uh, you can tick a box on a website, uh, you can do it over the phone, or you can do it face to face. Now you cannot send an electronic message to ask for permission because this is a marketing message in itself. So it's really up to the sender to prove that they got the person's permission before they send that marketing message. Now the second one is inferred permission. And that be, you may actually infer that you have permission to send marketing messages if the recipient has a knowing and direct uh, relationship with you. And it's reasonable that they would uh, believe that they would expect to receive some marketing from your business. Because this usually happens when a person has a provable ongoing relationship with the business and the marketing is directly related to that relationship. Maybe an example is a good thing here. Like if somebody has a subscription to a service uh, or has an account or is a member, uh, the marketing therefore is really relevant to that relationship. But even if someone else is sending out your marketing message for you and they're using a purchased email list, it's still on you. You must have permission from each person who will receive your message before you send it. So it's really just best to avoid spamming altogether and adhere to the law. Because of course there are several different ways you can promote your products or services without resorting to spam. Like a video for instance, check out activeoutsourcing.com.au to see what I do. Uh, but creating content that is interesting and relevant to your target audience, such as a blog, uh, blog post or videos, they're really cool. Uh, if you insist on email though, always provide customers with a way to easily opt out of receiving emails from you if they choose. Now that's all for this week. I'll be back next week with another lyric with advice in it. Until then, stay safe, stay well, and keep your spam out of my inbox.